We got a fun one today. Submission, love, the example of Christ and the church, jam packed full of stuff. So come and join me. Welcome to Bible Time. Thanks for joining me today. This is the place that we read the, we, that we well, bit, 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 bit. yep, I can talk. This is the place that we read the Bible together every day. The primary purpose for this is that we would spend time devotionally reading the Bible, spending time relationally with God, uh, devo- you know, doing your devotionals. That's kind of a Christianese term, um, but I just want to make very clear what this means. This means that the purpose of this time is not to academically study something. It's not to necessarily, you know, go through the Greek words and all that, although that is completely important and and stuff that we should do. But what I'm trying to do in these videos is help people and show people that even if you don't do study or you don't know, you know, how to understand all the theological concepts, that I really believe that even um, the, the youngest person in the faith or somebody that doesn't know anything else about the Bible, that they can pick up the Word of God, they can read it, and that God desires in some degree to just speak to their soul and to, to build his relationship with them through his Word. I believe his Word is living, active, and, 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 and encouraging relationship in us. And so while as a, you know, I would consider myself to be somebody that values theological study and academic study for sure. And and that's a good thing as I'm a preacher. But uh, that's not what this time is primarily. Now, oftentimes my devotional reading is going to lead to um, an academic study because it's like I'll read something. I'll say, man, I need to look more into that. But when we approach God in relationship first, which I think is the way that we should approach our everyday life, uh, we're approaching his word and his presence with the spirit of, I just want to grow in my relationship with you. I want to spend time with you. And so um, sometimes devotional reading leads to academic study because academic study and right understanding, orthodoxy or orthodox belief um, you know, is obviously needed at times to help us know how to how to understand God and how to relate with Him in our relationship and how to walk that out. But I want to point out that in these videos and for this time and my ultimate goal that every one of you would spend time every day in the morning or whenever just growing in your relationship with Christ to, to let you know that you don't have to do theological study every time to grow in that way. So I know that's a a long premise, but uh, I want to make that very clear, especially jumping into the section that we're jumping in. So uh, there may be some things here in the next few uh, paragraphs, next chapter or so that that we're probably going to be prompted to want to go and study a little bit. And so and that's a good thing. That's that's an okay thing. But I want us to draw out. I want to invite you to draw out. Lord, what are you speaking to me? Even if I don't have time or I'm not going to go and study a word out or whatever, what are you speaking to me? What can I glean from this just as is? So that's kind of the hope. That's the prayer. That's the goal. So we're picking up in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22, and it says this, Wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head over the wife, even as Christ is the head over the church, his body, and is himself its Savior. Now, As the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. So obviously this is uh, getting into a passage that some people absolutely love, some people um, don't like. It's a a tension passage and uh, we can't avoid these. We we shouldn't run or be scared of any passage in the Bible. Um, This is exactly one that maybe, you know, could be beneficial to have a little bit more study, um, spend a little, little bit more time. So why don't I keep reading and then maybe we'll we'll consider what we would go back in and address, or I don't know, maybe we'll we'll go study something out. But we see uh, submission now. I think I already know or believe generally that you know these subtitles are these are not actually in the Bible. They're added for. Uh, to break it up. For that matter, the verses weren't in the Bible. Those were added, and um, 
that's just not a bad thing like added in a sense of somebody who's trying to deceive anybody it's just this is well known that these are these are added just for the sake of clarity of describing sections but anyway point being you know just like a letter that you would write you're not going to break it up into different sections typically this is a letter written and we see here that he finishes this section talking about giving thanks and everything to God the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ and then so it almost appears that that this is just a continuation of the same section not like a brand new section uh, wives submitting to your husbands um, so I just want to point that out that these two sections are, are really linked together it's not like this standalone section you know now I need to talk about wives and husbands it's like it's a continuation of the same thought where he's talking about all peoples who are being filled with the spirit and that one natural expression of that people filled with the spirit is that we would submit to one another mutually submit out of love for christ and out of reverence for him and then it, it, in my opinion he goes on to speak about some examples of that wives submitting to husbands um, and, and, and the reason why would be because, hey, Christ is the head of the church, the husband is the head of the household, um, but it, it, um, it goes on to clarify even further, well, what's the other side of the coin, and why is that important? And so it says this, husbands, love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes it, and cherishes it just as Christ does Christ does the church because we are members of his body therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife and the two shall become one flesh this mystery is profound and I am saying that it refers to Christ and the church however let each one of you love his wife as himself and let the wife see that she respects her husband. So, first of all, I want to start down here at the bottom. Because, you know, this section up here is, is talking about a number of practical applications. And then we see this last line in verse 21, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. And then we see... Uh, the continuation of that thought, although specifically focused on the theme of husbands and wives, and that's a pretty long section there. And then way down here at the bottom, it's the, it says this, this is a mystery, or this, this mystery is profound, but I am saying that it refers to Christ and the church. So, uh, I love that even though there's this big section and we oftentimes will read these, this passage like in a wedding or whatever, because, um, you know, we, we take it to be talking about husbands and wives, which it is, but it's pretty clear to me right here that, that he's like, Hey, just so you know, what I'm talking about up here is actually about Christ and the church primarily. However, yeah, you know, each one of you should love your wife and your your wife should respect you as well. Um, and, and so the way that it comes off to me is like, hey, I'm, I'm, do, I'm doing this whole teaching on husbands and wives, but actually that's just an analogy. What I'm primarily talking about is Christ and the church. Although you should definitely use those themes and subjects in your marriages as well. I hope that makes sense. And you know what? If you have a different opinion, that's totally cool too. Um, and if, if God is speaking to you something different from this passage, that's cool too. But for me, this is the way that I read it. And I'm, I'm not saying I'm an expert by any means on it. I just, to me, it actually has more value because it's talking about 
a more profound thing than just one human relationship. It's talking about the great mystery, the universally, um, you, you know, the uni- universal mystery of God's relationship with His body, which is all of the believers throughout all of time, uh, every race, every nation, every age, uh, you know, throughout all of history that the body of God, the body of Christ is every believer. And that this is what he's talking about is the relationship between the bride, which is us, the people, and Christ, the groom or the head of the body. And the relationship is that we are to submit to him. We are to respect him. We are to honor him. And he, his job is to love us and lay down his life for us, which he did. And so that's the picture here is that we're in submission to an authority that is worthy to submit to, that that we submit to him because he loves us so much, because his leadership over us is the thing that we should really want to to be led by. And so, uh, you know, again, in my opinion, this whole section is talking about the church. Now, at the same time, that doesn't mean that it doesn't also apply to our earthly marriages because he emphasizes again, however, and brings it back to clearly an earthly marriage establishment. And so we see the word, uh, you know, respect here, and then we see the word love again. And so uh, I think it's really, 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 (laughs) having a hard time today really, really important that we remember that there's sort of these contrasting but complementary commandments in here. Submission, respect, love, um, gave himself up for her, sanctify her, cleanse her, wash her, that he might present her. I mean, this is the language in here of what Christ has done for us in serving us and in redeeming us and loving us and in sanctifying us is, and even Jesus says this has to be read in reflection of the life that Jesus lived. He said, I did, not, I did not come to be served, but to serve and give my life as a ransom. I came to get down on my knees to wash your feet. I came to serve you. That's who I am as a master, as a servant. And so uh, the way that I would read this and be encouraged Um, by this devotionally again i i do believe uh, that there is there's actually more that probably does need to be academically studied in this um, especially knowing that this can be a controversial uh, passage Um, and i just you know say that to you because i i can't even though i'm a teacher i can't always present to you that i know everything that's just incorrect and not right I do know that there's uh, some some controversy in here, um, as far as you know. Some people take this to uh, sort of make it feel like women are suppressed or something. But uh, again, when I'm reading this passage and and just devotionally seeking the Lord, to me, I I feel like man, the weight here is is on the the husband to love and serve the wife and that the the honor of you know given back to him to lead the household and to lead the relationship uh, within the model that Christ has given us is um, not a hierarchical thing that one gender is stomping on the other Um, it really should look more like you know if anything that the husband is is serving and, and elevating and presenting the woman um, in a in a greater light, in a better <laughs> position, in a better life, and so the idea that the you know that the f- feminists need to revolt against this patriarchal view view, uh, I don't I don't personally read it that way or resonate with that. I believe that God has called me to lay down my life for my family and for my wife, and that if if you know somebody was going to take a bullet, it needs to be me, right? And, uh, and I need to provide safety for her, uh, comfort for her, peace for her, provision for her. Um, 
and and that there's a healthy submission in the kingdom of God, that it's not a twisted form like we see in this world of of pushing somebody or beating somebody down, but but there's a healthy submission and that that's a good thing. And so it's both and. It's I think that both partners love each other, both partners. Obviously, we've already seen that there's a, a degree of mutual submission in the kingdom, no matter who it is, whether it's your husband or wife or uh a person, you know, another believer, no matter even their age, if they're older or younger than you, in the kingdom, there's already an established mutual submission out of reverence for Christ. But then there's also something, um, you know, special about the specific household of marriage. And so those are my my thoughts. Um, as far as the passage, again, this is not all the academic theological teaching that could be done on this Um, but as I'm just reading this this morning for my devotions what I'm gonna what I'm gonna pull out of this aside from academic study and in parsing out the specific verbs and in the Greek and all that is you know I'm I what I'm what I'm just kind of hearing and receiving is even based on Jesus's example that God has a value that those in leadership would be people of service and love and elevation of other people. And that that's uh, what I feel, you know, the Holy Spirit is saying just right now in this moment is, Craig, you need to be a person that elevates your wife, that elevates your kids, that loves other people, that, you you know, that there's a, a love and an elevation and a service to everybody, including your wife, that says, I am laying down my life for you. And I think that that would be a challenge for every one of us, no matter our gender or our marital status, is that we are to follow Christ's example. And so, and the beautiful mystery of all this is that, that that's the picture that, that gives us an example, is that Christ laid down his life for the bride of Christ, his bride, the church, the body of Christ, and he is our head, and we submit to him happily because he's worthy of it. So that's what I got for you today. And uh, I pray that you'd have ears to hear what the Holy Spirit's saying to you. So we'll see you again tomorrow. God bless.